Hello everyone, welcome back to 3 Deviations. In today's video of single variable calculus, we are going to be wrapping up our the first part of Unit 3 on curve sketching. So this is something we've been building up to in many videos past. So first we covered the idea of the maxima and minima. Then we talked about increasing and decreasing. Then we covered the um, then we covered the intervals and concavity and inflection points. And then we kind of wrapped that up with a little bit of a study on curve sketching, but that was kind of um, specific to the calculus part. But of course, um, we were able to sketch graphs pretty well before we had calculus. So if we combine what we know with calculus and what we know just with our pre-calculus and algebra methods, then we're gonna get pretty darn good look at what that graph looks like. So why don't we start today and talk about the idea of sketching a curve and just finishing off what we started. All right, so as always, I recommend re-watching any videos that you might not be fully comfortable on. Just make sure that you are not behind. So we are going to be starting with just reviewing three um, or, or four, four main pre-calculus topics and then three calculus topics. And these are all revolving around the sketching of a graph. All right, so the first of these is going to be finding the domain. So domain is something that's fairly trivial. So if I want to find the domain of my function, that's really going to dictate where it's defined. So it's going to make sure I don't have any holes, or it's going to it's going to tell me where my holes, asymptotes, are. Um, and then we also occasionally with these piecewise functions have jumps, but that's really the most that we have. That should be an open, probably. All right. So that is what we deal with domain. And of course, with domain, we get range as well. And that's an important topic that we should be um, wary of when we are trying to look at functions. Furthermore, we need to think about intercepts. So this is x and y intercepts. We talked about this for a while um, in high school and in probably middle school as well. But our y-intercept is when we set all the x values equal to 0. The x-intercept is when we set the y value equal, equal to 0. Really, when this is going to be really kind of challenging is when we have those polynomials um, that might only be able to be solved by um, the rational roots theorem that can get a little bit tedious. Um, and sometimes we can't solve for them at all. Um, and Sometimes we need to plug it into that huge cubic formula, which I don't even think they teach at most schools. But that would just take a while, and it would be a little bit tedious. But we're not going to be doing an example like that today, maybe another time. So the third thing is the general shape of our function. So with the general shape, we have an even function. So we can have even, which looks something like that. It's symmetric, symmetric here. Um, about the um, y-axis, and then we can also have odd functions, which are symmetric about the origin. And then we can also have one-to-one -one functions. This is a cubic, which happens to be a one-to-one -one function, this, this specific cubic here. Um, and that means that it has an inverse. That's not particularly relevant here. But we also want to determine its end behavior, and that can be determined with some limits I'm at positive and negative infinity to determine where the f of x values go as we go way out there in the x-axis. All right, so that's end behavior and our general shape. Uh, finally, our final pre-calculus topic that we want to talk about is the asymptotic behavior. So when I'm talking about asymptotic behavior, I'm talking about when I find the, the, vertical, the vertical asymptotes. So we have vertical asymptotes. So those could look like that where we are not allowed to be defined. Um, we could also have horizontal asymptotes, which kind of are some decay there. And then we also have the slant asymptotes, which are kind of the wild card, where we have um, an asymptote kind of on a line, on a linear pattern. So that is our, those are really our pre-calculus methods. So we have four pre-calculus ways that we can um, 
sketch our graph that we can get our ideas. Now we also have um, calculus methods that we're going to use. So we've got three more calculus methods that we've talked about in the past. The first one is increasing and decreasing intervals. So this is when we use the first derivative, set it equal to zero, we make our sign chart, and we determine where it's greater and less than zero. And that, of course, dictates where the slope is greater than and less than zero. Also, with the first derivative, we can find our maxima and minima. This comes at our critical numbers, um, and we can find where our derivative equals zero, where our slope equals zero, and those are going to be our maxima and minima values. And that is going to also determine the shape of our graph. And finally, we can use the second derivative and its ability to recognize concavity and inflection points. And of course, we have all of those tests that can help us make this a little bit more efficient. And this uses a very similar sign chart method as the um, increasing and decreasing method. Okay, so after we've said all of that, I think it would be wise to do a quick example. So with this example, we are going to sketch the graph f of x equals 2x squared over x squared minus 1. So before we get started, I'm going to draw some coordinate axes up here. Just before we even start that, here we have our x-axis. We have our y-axis there. All right, so we are going to start off. We're gonna we're gonna go in the same order that we did last um, that we did talking about what these things are. So first, we're gonna be talking about the domain. So with any rational function, we need to be talking about where this guy is gonna be equal to zero because that's gonna be a problem since we are not allowed to divide by zero for obvious reasons. So if I set that not equal to zero, x squared minus one cannot equal zero, that is going to yield a domain of negative infinity to one, negative one, negative one to one and one to infinity. So now we have our domain, we can mark this on our graph. So we have negative one there and we have one there. So we're gonna have some sort of discontinuity there and we're gonna have another discontinuity of some sort here. Okay, so now we've determined our domain. Now what we need to do is we need to determine our x-intercepts and our y-intercepts. So to determine our x-intercepts, we set f of x equal to zero, and that will yield um, an x-intercept of zero. And then, of course, our y-intercept is going to yield zero as well, um, because if we set x equal to zero, all of this gets killed. We divide, by, we divide zero by one. That's, of course, going to be zero. So we've got our... Um, intercepts right at the origin makes things nice, easy, and symmetric. Okay, so now we are going to continue. So with number three, we are going to find f of negative x, and f of negative x is actually going to be equal to f of x, which means that um, our function is going to be even. So we're going to have a function symmetric about the y-axis. So we're going to have a nice symmetric even function. That's going to be helpful in the future. All right, so now we are going to be talking about the limits and discontinuities. So um, first of all, we are going to talk about our horizontal asymptotes. So if we remember how to do a horizontal asymptotic limit, we are going to take the limit as x approaches infinity um, of our function, um, and we're going to see what that equals. So if I move all of these to infinity, um, if you remember back in unit one, all we care about is the leading terms. And our degrees are actually the same on the leading terms. So we divide the coefficients and we have two over one. So two over one is two, so that's gonna give two. And of course we have the same case when it's negative infinity. So the limit is x approaches negative infinity of f of x is equal to. So we have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 2. So we have 1, 2. So we're going to do a horizontal asymptote there. All right. And now to do our vertical asymptotes, we just need to do two more limits. So we're going to take the limit as x approaches 1 from the positive side of f of x. And that's going to be equal to <clears throat> infinity 
we're going to have infinity there. And then if I take the limit as x approaches 1 from the negative side of f of x, that's going to be negative infinity. And it's the same story because it's even for and symmetric here by the asymptotes for the other two limits. So we're going to have um, our asymptotes behaving in that sort of manner at x equals negative 1 and 1. All right, so now we got to deal with some calculus. So first step, we are going to take the derivative of our function. So when we do that, we're going to be using the quotient rule, and our derivative is going to yield negative 4x over um, x squared minus 1 quantity squared. And if I make my sign chart x is going to be less than 0, uh, when, when x is less than 0, our derivative is going to be greater than 0. So we're increasing on the whole interval between zero, uh, between negative infinity and zero, of course, we have that um, negative one discontinuity, which we will factor in. And then we also have x greater than zero when f prime of x is less than zero. So that means that we're decreasing um, when we are greater than zero, um, except for the discontinuity that we have at one. Okay, so that's going to give us some, that, that's going to be fairly helpful. Um, and now we are going to find our critical numbers. So our, we have a critical number at x equals 0. Um, and x is going from positive to negative. Um, sorry, f prime of x is going from positive to negative. So we are going to have a local maximum at x equals 0. So this is a local maximum. I think we now know roughly what our graph is going to look like. But just for good measure, why don't we find our um, concavity intervals. If I take the second derivative, um, I am going to get 12x squared plus 4 over x squared minus 1 cubed. And um, I'm going to get that I'm concave up between negative infinity and negative 1 as well as 1 and infinity and I'm going to be concave down um, in between our asymptotes. Okay, so now we know it, now we know basically what our graph is going to look like. So we have our concavity, it's going to be concave up so we're actually going to be concave up and increasing here. So we're going to be concave up and increasing here. And it also says we're going to be concave up and decreasing here. So now we have the top of our function all set. Now we just need to deal with here. We've got some asymptotes. We know we can't go above here. Um, and we have a maximum here. So it's going to look like this. So we're going to have this. And there we go. That is our graph. We know our maximum. We know our intervals of concavity. We know where we're increasing and decreasing. We've got a pretty good sense of what this graph looks like. And that is how we do that. So that is how we do curve sketching there. And um, we hope you enjoyed kind of our journey through a little bit of pre-calculus and some uh, differential calculus. That was quite, quite fun. Um, in the next video, we are going to be moving on a little bit um, we're going to be talking about some different word problems that we're going to be dealing with in the, in the later part of Unit 3, which is, of course, going to be covering some more real-world applications. We will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.